joined now on the broadcast by play-by-play -play man for the Acadie Bathers T10, Jill DeGrasse. Been a long time since we've had the chance to have Jill on the program. Jill, what are your thoughts on how competitive the T10 have been this season after really kind of going all for it last year? We had a good team in Bathurst for the last three years, and of course this year it was expected it would be the start of a rebuilding process, but so far the team is kind of playing good. Mind you, it's hard to compete with the stronger team of the league, and here we're talking about the Moosehead, even the Wildcats, they have a good team this year. On the Quebec side, of course, the Quebec Ramparts, Sherbrooke, Gats, you know, those are a tough team for the Titan, but the fact that in the Maritime Division, you have Halifax almost on their own in first place, and then we have Moncton. The other four teams, they're in the rebuilding mode, and so far, the Titan is playing pretty good, being in third place of the Maritime Division. But when you compare with all the other teams of the league, even if the Titan are in third position in the Maritime, they're 13th in the overall standing. That's where the pitcher is not as good, of course. But it's a normal procedure after going for it for uh, two years in a row, and then mostly last year. This year, of course, we knew that we would lose a lot of good players, and we have to live through that. But this year, so far, so good, like we say. The t tab part ways with Jacob Melanson and Riley Kidney, but still some good 20-year-olds there in Bathurst. There was probably some interest in Ben Allison and Cole Larkin, but only so many spots for 20s on contenders. How much do you think it helps them keeping a hold of these strong players for the rest of the season? It does help them because at least there's a few players that can look to for the younger guys being in the lineup right now. They also added Robert Orr in the last transaction period, and he's going to have that role to play also to surround all the young players of this team. With the presence of these guys, the Titan can at least compete with the three other team in the Maritime Division. That's besides Halifax and Moncton. So we know the Titan can compete with the Islanders. They beat the Islanders last Saturday night. They can compete with the Eagles and also with St. John. It should be interesting, even though we know and we realize we're not part of the main group in the overall standing. But in the Maritime Division, at least the Titan can say that they are in the race for the third place. First year for Gordy Dwyer as head coach. He knows this division very well, having been in Charlottetown and St. John last year. How do you think he's done in his first year behind the bench? Considering that he lost so many good players, and even recently he had to trade Riley Kidney and Jacob Melanson, like you mentioned, I think Dwyer is doing a good job in the fact that he knows the Maritime Division and that the Titan is playing most of their games against Maritime Division team. That helps the Titan organization right now. He knows exactly what the opposite team can offer. Maybe that's a factor that the guy that was there before Dwyer, Jason Clark, he came from Ontario and not knowing too much the Quebec League, I think that Dwyer has an advantage there over Clark in that respect. I think that the coaches, the work that he has done is at a certain point responsible to make that the Titan is in third place right now. The Tita have a familiar name on the back end there in Bathurst with Emile Perron. Of course, we know him from his time in Cape Breton. Maybe struggled a little bit because of his draft status. It's a lot to live up to. How do you think he's done in his second year in the queue? He's not a flashy player, but he's very effective at the blue line. I think he's doing something good, and he's having a fairly good season with the Titan. At least he's in the plus, that's for sure which is not always easy to do on a rebuilding team. One other interesting thing about the Titan, not only is it a small market, but it's very much a bilingual city. And you're part of the bilingual presentation because you are doing the radio broadcast in French. And, you know, Peter's handling the webcast in English. How tricky do you think that is for the team to try to make sure that both markets are covered in terms of both English and French presentation? When we first had a contract with the Titan to broadcast their game on our station, we are a French radio station, and that's the license that we have. But yet the Titan insisted that we had some English content in the broadcast of the game. We turned to the CRTC and we told them the situation, Bathurst being split in half between French and English. The population of the city of Bathurst is right in half. Then when you consider all the surrounding area, then it becomes 80% French and 20% English. 
but it was important for the Titan to have some English content. We had the okay from the CRTC, although we don't have the license for it, but our demand was approved by the CRTC that we would give some English content during the game. And that's why I do the broadcast in English, but all the comments are translated in English so that the English listeners can follow the game that the Titan is playing on the road. But it's true that it's a particular situation where the team, they have to advertise both French and English and all the public stuff being announced during the game. Well, the announcer has to do it in French and English. So there's some advantage and some disadvantage to that point. But I think the Titan is doing a good job with that. Last player I wanted to ask about, not a key player on Bathurst, but somebody who has Cape Breton connections so interested in him is Nolan Forster comes over from Ontario. Just talk about how he's played for Bathurst the last few years. He's a third-line player. I think for a third-line player, he's doing his job. The Titan seems to have confidence in him because he's on a regular shift all the time, every time. He's doing pretty good. He's a good guy to have on the team also. We like to hear that. Great insight on everything that's going on with the Bathurst T10. Jill, thanks for this, and have fun watching the team the rest of the year. And have a great season. That is Jill DeGrasse. He's play-by-play announcer for the Bathurst T10 Off and All Say. You're listening to the intermission of Cape Breton Credit Union Eagles Hockey 1270 CJCD.